Hello, everybody. My name is Paolo Fai, and this session I will talk about data analytics integration with distributed tracing system Jaeger. Uh, before we start, I would like to know uh, how many of you are running any distributed tracing somewhere? And how many of you would like to, to, to do distributed tracing? <laughs> and how many of you would like to run some data analytics jobs or are here to learn about uh, machine learning? Okay, so I think I will disappoint you a bit. <laughs> so this talk, I will not talk about machine learning models, you know, any like uh, AI stuff in general. I will talk about, you know, what kind of data analytics integration we did on top of Jaeger. So later on, we can run these jobs to aggregate data and extract additional features from tracing data, data what we collect. But before we start, I would like to talk about difference between monitoring and observability, because I think these two terms are, you know, uh, referred interchangeably, and I don't think they uh, they mean the same. Uh, and observability is something regarding, you know, many conversation you can find on the internet is something which requires human interaction. It's something when you debug a system, but by using telemetry data. So not debugging in a traditional debugger, but using the telemetry data. You are trying to answer the question, what happened after the fact, you know, after the request, after the transaction. On the other hand, monitoring is something what can work fully autonomously. You know, it just collects the data and then validates, for example, the outlet definitions or something like that. And my point here is that you know, distributed tracing is something what we use to debug our systems. It's something what is used for root cause analysis or that there is a problem in our environment. So it makes a lot of sense to provide a capability in distributed tracing so users can ask very complicated questions what happened with the request. So our goal in, like, by doing this integration to allow data science on top of uh, you know, tracing data is basically to derive more information from traces what they collect. Traces, they, col they contain a lot of rich information. We see the transaction end to end. We see what everything would happen with a lot of metadata associated to it. Uh, so, you know, you can run these models as part of your standard Jaeger deployment to derive metrics uh, which are applicable to all of the data you collect. Or other use case might be that there is an incident and you would like to do some kind of on-demand incident analysis. So you would spin up you know, a Jupyter notebook and you would write there some kind of very simplified code uh, to verify your hypothesis whether a specific action is responsible for bringing your system down. And this platform can be used by, you know, by the operators uh, which operate the system, but also for data scientists who they don't know the logic, they don't know the how to deploy Jaeger and do all of the stuff, all of the deployment. They don't understand how tracing works. They just want to write, you know, data analytics uh, jobs, the AI. So on today's agenda, I will talk how we approach this problem in Jaeger. There will be some architecture. Uh, what kind of architecture allows us to do these kind of things? Then something about trace domain-specific language. Uh, so we want to make it very easy for developers to, uh, to aggregate traces and extract features from them. And last, what kind of metrics we were able to derive from traces so far. So no AI, I'm sorry. Uh, so that, how do we approach this in Jaeger? So at the beginning, we have to query the data, right? We have a lot of data. We have to have access to the, to the data. Then we would like to apply some kind of filtering. And after the filtering, we run the model or we just extract the features we are interested in. And then the result is, again, data. We have to store it somewhere. So to get the data, we already, like Jaeger deployment uh, can be configured in such a way that we will use a Kafka. So we can just connect to the same Kafka instance and get the data from there and then just aggregate on the time-based time windows, right? Uh, this is for the data, the new data you collect. For all data, we can use the Jaeger query, which then connects to the database. For the filtering, the thing, you know, trace is, uh, is basically a graph. It's directly a cyclic graph. 
so we think you know navigating within a graph might not be super easy. So it makes a lot of sense to provide high-level API which will simplify navigation. So for example, in trace domain, uh, the query might look like something like this: get me all client spans with a specific duration, or you want to answer questions. Are these spans even connected somehow? And then to store the data, this is kind of open question. We don't know yet how we should approach it. Uh, you know, different models or different type of analysis, they might produce different results. Uh, so it will require different schema for each of the results, right? But maybe there can be some kind of like generic schema that can be used uh, for most of the models. Or even some of the some of the you know, feature extraction will result in the metrics. So you can directly expose the metrics as Prometheus endpoint and just collect that from Prometheus. So this is the current Jaeger architecture. On the left side, there is your application instrumented with Jaeger client, open tracing API, whatever. The important thing is this is reporting data to Jaeger collector. And the collector is sending to Kafka and from Kafka there is a separate component which reads from Kafka and stored to the storage. So we can basically hook up our job to the same Kafka instance, to the same topic, read it from there in like timed windows. Because the problem with tracing is that, you know, uh, let's say you have microservice architecture, you have 10 services, and the request goes across them, right? Uh, and each of these services, they report data, tracing data, spans. And these spans, they come to Kafka different times. So you don't get the trace at the, you know, as a one object. You get only spans. So you have to kind of aggregate on the time, on the time windows. Once you do that, uh, you can aggregate on trace IDs, extract the traces, and then run the analysis. So this is for the models you would like to run as a, you know, standard deployment. Uh, so you just deploy like something like Spark streaming or Flink streaming extract results and expose metrics or store the results to the database. For the on-demand analysis, you can spin up Jupyter Notebook, basically connect to the same data store or to Jaeger query to get historical data. So about the trace DSL. Uh, so you know, trace is, uh, is directed acyclic graph, so it makes a lot of sense to represent it as a graph, right? And uh, we try to use two kind of open source graph languages to kind of extend those and so you can use, use these languages and query the trace data. Uh, so I, I experiment with, experimented with Cypher from Neo4j. It's something like SQL, so it's, uh, it's a declarative language. Uh, so you first define the query and then you run the query against the database. But our pro problem is that we don't expose the query API our storage doesn't expose that because we store, you know, uh, spans as documents. So we couldn't use Cypher. Then the next choice was uh, Apache Tinkerpop, which is a, like is a framework with a lot of components. One of the components is a Gremlin, which is graph travels language. It's very different to Cypher. It's a, it's a functional language. And Gremlin is great because you can actually add new methods uh, to the language. We'll see that in a minute. And then there is uh, Tinker Graph, which is in-memory representation of the graph. So th what we actually do, uh, you know, once we read the data from the storage, we aggregate that and we construct uh, you know, like in-memory database uh, for each you know, time window. And then you run the query against the in-memory representation. So this is, when you want to extend Gremlin, you basically extend two APIs or two interfaces. One of these is uh, graph traversal. Uh, so for example, the first method is, uh, is saying basically, get me a trace. Like, uh, is there a trace with this specific ID in a graph? And then we call the Gremlin core API, which is basically has like, is there a property on this entity, which is usually a vertex? Uh, it just returns uh, that. More complicated one can be, for example, a root span. So we want to jump to a root span, which basically says, I'm looking for vertices which doesn't have any incoming edges, which means the root edge, root 
vertex. From my experience with Gremlin, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to, to provide these methods because it's, it's not trivial and I don't think DevOps people would bother and learn Gremlin uh, you know, in order to kind of verify their hypothesis about the, the data what they collect. These ones are kind of like easy to write, but you will quickly end up with kind of complicated ones when you want to verify something not trivial. So how we use it? Uh, so for example, the first question, like, is it the client span of a specific duration? So again, we are using has, has, like, has a tag from, from the previous, uh, you know, from the extended interface, uh, we provide the tag uh, key and value, and then the duration. Duration is also from the extended API, uh, just provided you know, on the predicate the specific uh, duration we're looking for. The other one is, for example, are two spans connected? So again, we provide the name of the span, and then some running API, uh, you repeat. Uh, outgoing edges until there is a vertex which has a property uh, child, for example, child two. Again, I think it also makes sense, for example, to kind of like wrap this into uh, an utility method like this one and provide like, uh, is this a span with this operation name parent of this one? It will just return traversal. So, as I mentioned, Jaeger doesn't support graph queries, so you cannot you know, write complicated Gremlin query and then run, in, run it against our database or our, against our query service, which kind of sucks because sometimes you would like to run the analysis on the historical data. Uh, so for that, we the thinking that maybe we will never support the full graph API in our services. So maybe we can just you know, kind of have the common use case and well define those use cases and then just, you know, implement the, uh, the subset of the Gremlin API. Uh, so what kind of metrics we derive from, uh, from traces at the moment? Uh, so for example, the first one is a network latency between uh, two basically services. I think there is no, you cannot derive this from any metric systems. So you get metrics from the, for example, for the server side uh, and the request duration. You may get client side request duration, but you are never able to split them by a host name or by a service because there is no such attack in, uh, in those metrics. The other one, for example, is trace depth, which basically says, uh, you know, the height of the tree, basically, the trace tree. The other one is very similar to trace depth, is, uh, is a service depth, so what is the length of, of the services calling each other, right? So you have, for example, service A calling B and B calling C, so the, the depth will be two because you have two edges between services, between the hosts. It's basically number of uh, edges or number of network calls between the services. And then last one, for example, like dependent services. How many services depend on your service? Or how many services call your service calls? So these metrics can be, you know, uh, just exported as Prometheus metrics. So actually the Spark streaming could export, you know, the Prometheus endpoint. Uh, and just Prometheus will scrape those, uh, those metrics. Just example of, uh, of the network latency and the trace depth. Uh, the other type of metrics we, uh, we are able to, to derive at the moment is trace quality metrics. Uh, you know, to do with tracing, uh, the most difficult part uh, is actually instrument your systems. You are gonna deploy tracing in a new environment. Uh, and there are usually a lot of problems. Uh, people can kind of forget instrumenting uh, 
some APIs, and then you get you know, split traces. So it makes also a lot of sense to actually measure the quality of your instrumentation. And this is actually UI from Uber, from you know, the, uh, the taxi company. Uh, so they build a you know, custom tool which is able to measure these metrics. Uh, so what they do, for example, this is a service GoPro, uh, and then they measure, for example, is there, a, like, does this trace have all the metadata, like, for example, like client and server spans? Is the Jaeger client version reporting them uh, in appropriate format? Or are they using the right Jaeger client version? And things like this. So, for example, this is the, you know, the, the KPI. In this case, it's one, so everything looks fine. Uh, the problem with this tool is that uh, they calculate the results, but then they store them in a Cassandra table, uh, which means like another dependency on a database. And when you think about these metrics, it's basically a counter. It counts the spans which satisfy or doesn't satisfy the criteria. So I thought maybe we can just export them as Prometheus metrics, as the counters, and then uh, you get the same KPIs, right? But the problem is that these tools also provide the ability to jump to the traces which doesn't satisfy the criteria, you know, the wrong traces. We don't have this capability at the moment because, you know, the metrics API, they don't allow you to, to label traces. There is no correlation between traces and, met and, uh, and metrics at the moment. But maybe later, so this is the example of the Prometheus metrics. You now we see the, the trace quality, for example, the client version. And we see, the, for example, the service route uh, with this client version uh, is failing all of the, basically, the, all the spans failing this, uh, this criteria. So then I, then I actually thought, like, how we can, uh, you know, calculate this, like, uh, KPI, just say one number. We, want to ex we don't want to look at metrics. We want to have just one number to, which will say what is the quality of your instrumentation. And I think it's possible to do, actually, with the, with the Prometheus query language. Uh, you can just sum up my numbers and then, you know, divide by the, uh, by the total count. But still, the problem is how to how then to navigate to the trace instances, to the trace exemplars. And actually there is ongoing work in open source. Uh, the open source metrics libraries are going to support trace exemplars. So you will be able to jump from, from metrics to trace instances. Okay, basically, all that I have presented is kind of like new effort where we want to go with Jaeger. So we want it to be more data analytics platform. So not only just only visualize the data because that's what we do at the moment. We don't do any kind of post-processing. So it's very new. If you have any feedback, any comments, what kind of metadata we could derive from the traces, what could we provide more to users, uh, then just come and talk to me or create an issue uh, we are happy to, to hear your feedback. Okay, this is everything that I have. Okay, do you have any questions? Yes? Um, we are considering now to do what more players because we are starting now. And uh, our main uh, main feature we want to get is from like observability at runtime. What are the analytics that we call? And then, uh, so as we are thinking of making a basic deployment without involving hack at all. So my question is, uh, if Kafka is not in the picture here, are we making this analysis really difficult, or is there any alternative? Like, if you use the basic components, uh, you know, we can make the analytics uh, a lot more complicated, so the information will be to involve with Kafka. Yeah, so the question is, is it possible to do data analytics with Jaeger without Kafka? So the question is, maybe yes, you could get the historical data from Jaeger query, but you will not be able to connect to the stream of incoming data. 
right? Because the, the storage is, the other storage is what we use doesn't support this. Any other questions? Yes? So the question is, how does it differ, or whether if we could connect uh, our, or export our data to other analytics platforms? Uh, I think you can do it if the other platforms support, you know, importing the data from other systems. And I don't know what kind of features they provide, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> but, uh, so I was thinking, for example, at Red Hat, there is this component, uh, it's called log, anomaly detector or something like this. Uh, so I was thinking maybe we could, you know, transform traces to logs uh, and then run the log anomaly detection on, the, on those. It's maybe the same type of the question you asked. So I think it makes sense also to use other systems if they provide such a capability. Yeah. Yes, on a, so the question is, if we considered the, like, consider the shape of the trace as an input for data analytics job. Uh, the question is definitely, it's actually one of the new features in Jaeger is uh, a new visualization where you can actually see the differences between two traces. Because you see, when you see an incident, uh, then you can definitely find a normal trace with that behavior, right? For the same endpoint with kind of same parameters. And then you compare the structure and you will immediately see where the, hap where the error happens. Because then that's the place where the structure goes, uh, goes differently, is different between these two traces. No. No, so far. But I think it makes sense to, uh, to have such an AI job, which will do that. Any other questions? So maybe one of the use cases may be that your service is scoring recursively itself, which, well, there can be better metric for that, right? But, uh, for example, you would like to limit the, the number of network hops to keep it minimal for performance reasons. Other questions? Okay, then, thank you very much. Thank you.